This video is going to cover three things. First of all, how to take off the rear view mirror, which you'd need to do if you wanted to take off these trim pieces. And the reason you might want to take off these trim pieces is either to address a common problem, which is a loose floppy sun visor, or if you've just painted the car, or you're about to paint it or change the color of the car and you want to take off these a pillar trim. So we're going to start with showing you how to take the rear view mirror off. We're going to show you how to refurbish these and replace and renew all the fittings that you'll probably need to do once you take them off and finish with showing you how to attach or detach these a pillar trims. To get this mirror off is actually counterintuitive and not something you would think of unless you've seen it done before. It's basically held on by a spring and to get it off you have to grab the hold of the back stalk and spin it or twist it and pull as hard as you can eventually it'll come off. Try not to pull it by the mirror because you're more likely to pull this mirror section off than you are to get this off but you'd need to take that mirror off if you say to, to remove these trim pieces here because there were three screws underneath here. So let's have a look at another mirror that's off the car so you can get a better idea. Now this is the mirror that we yanked off the project car that we're doing and as you can see it is not the mirror from an SL, it's much bigger than that but we can get a pretty good idea of how these are supposed to come off. The mirror is held on to the top of the car in this bracket here which I've removed off the car, it's held on by three screws and you'll need to take those three screws out and this piece off before you can get these top trim pieces. Okay, but those two little nodules there basically just clip into there. Now you may be faced with a situation where this mirror is just not coming off, possibly because these are just corroded or seized in there, in which case you might have to get a screwdriver or something between here and here, and you need to do it very carefully. You can see on here somebody's already damaged the trim, which is almost certain, certainly going to happen if you put a sharp screwdriver down there, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Um, if you had a plastic wedge, that would work better, and if you could access things from behind, that would be better as well because you wouldn't see the damage that you're about to do. I'm going for the nuclear option because we've actually got this off the car. I'm able to come in behind and bash a screwdriver in and you can see that that's just starting to move. So in theory, I should be able to pop that off, hopefully without this springing off and breaking the mirror glass. Managed to get that out eventually, and what happens when you get the um, screwdriver in there is you're able to basically lever that spring up like that. Oops, take off some of the pressure off these two pins. So, we're going to de rust that, and you could potentially try popping out that spring and seeing if um, you could just put the spring in a rust bath. But I'm not sure how you'd ever get that spring back in there and it's a pretty tough spring so what I'm going to try and do is put this whole mirror or at least that part of it into a rust bath like so and just leave it there for a few days and that'll get rid of most of that rust. This mirror has just been in the rust bath overnight you can see all of that rust is off that spring without having to take the spring out we'll just wash that off tidy it up a little bit and that can go back on the car. Finish up, putting a tiny bit of oil on the spring and on these fittings here and that should keep it good for the next few years. That only leaves us with the problem of getting these screws out. Now I wonder what the chance of getting those screws out without them just snapping off. We've not, I don't think we've managed to remove any other screws off this car without the heads rounding like that for example. We've had to drill every single one of them out so let's just give these a go and see if we've got any better luck. Okay, here goes. First screw. Oh, look at that. I can hardly believe it. There's hope. Look at that. Second screw. My goodness me, these are actually coming out. I'm replacing these screws, obviously. Last one. Three out of three, that is quite amazing. It makes me feel less bad about having to drill out these screws here, here and here. And also 
these screws here and here, which we've already started drilling out. And what we'll do is we'll pop this in a rust bath, get any rust off it, repaint it, and we'll use that one to put that back on the car. This frame upon which the mirror sits has been in the rust bath. Now there's these little runners here, we're just going to oil each side, because and the rest of it we're just going to dust it over with some black encapsulator. We'll just mask those little bits of metal off. And once again, that'd be good to go back on the car. Just gone over that. A couple of coats of the Eastwood rust encapsulator. And that'll be dry by tomorrow and ready to go back on the car. Okay, let's start drilling this screw out. Okay, well, just about. So we need to try and do that without damaging this plastic fitting here, because we do need that. Too damaged, drilled all the screws out or taken those out that come out. You should, in theory, be able to take that off. Look at that, that is in much, much better condition than what we just took off the project car. So we'll just be cleaning that up a little bit and putting that back on the project car. Trim has come up really nicely, just using a bit of this turtle wax black in the flash. That's the one we've cleaned. That's the one we're just going to clean now. We'll also be needing these here. They look a bit rusty, but we'll just put those in a rust bath and they should come out absolutely fine. It's a really good idea to make a note of what screws go where. This um, sun visor chrome here is held on by two raised head screws, Phillips raised head screws. I think they're about 16 mil, maybe 18 mil. We'll measure them when we get back, but we'll be replacing those. And there are two of those that hold this to the top of the car. There's another slotted screw there, and that's how you adjust the ease at which you can move this. Basically, that slotted screw adjusts the pressure on the plate that's exerted on that ball. If you ever need to um, adjust your sun visor. One of the reasons for doing this channel is to help people avoid the mistakes I've made. And I made a schoolboy error with these little pieces here. Do not put these in a rust bath because this alloy here will react with the acid and it will basically fizz away and start disintegrating. Um, obviously it will take the rust off but it will also take some of the alloy off as well so don't put these pieces in a rust bath. It can be super hard to get these screws out, often they rusted in there which is the case here so unfortunately this is an example of another screw I think we're going to have to drill out. Once again it's very difficult to get heat on this part of the car here. You risk burning the paint, cracking the glass and melting the rubber so I think we're just gonna try and drill that screw out unfortunately. As I mentioned in the other video I made the schoolboy error of putting this piece here in the rust bath and basically have ended up corroding a lot of this away. It's pretty bad condition anyway so these are the sun visors that are on the project car. They're not SL sun visors, but the actual stalks are the same. But just like the other car, these little adjustment screws here are completely rusted in. So I'm just very carefully drilling those out with new sharp drill bits. Drilled out about as much of that screw as we can. We started with a one and a half mil, stepped up to two, two and a half, and then finished on a three mil. And once again, I've mentioned this before, but we've just bought for this restoration or project a huge box of drills, much, much cheaper. It's about £20 for a box of drills, much, much cheaper. And you make sure you ensure that when you're drilling these out, you're using really sharp drill bits. So now I'm going to do something that I really hate doing, which is using an easy out to see if I can get the remainder of that screw out. If you break one of these in that uh, hole, you really are, oh, you really do have problems. Of course, I haven't got a camera stand here, but I'm going to see if I can... I'll just step this up to the next easy out. You can see that that screw is just starting to come out, at least what's left of it. There's still some screw left in there, which we should be able to pick out. And then it's just a matter of retapping those threads, putting a new screw in. Finally managed to drill out both of those screws, tidied this up with a wire wheel. Just wrap a little bit of wire around that, and that will get most of that rust off. And all the difficult bits are done. I'm going to probably paint that with some Bosney Chrome or maybe the MRO. And what I don't like doing is painting over rust. So this will ensure that any remnants of rust are gone. All the visor rails have been sitting in this rust bar for a couple of days. Most of the rust is gone. We'll just wash off 
that rust remover and then go over that with a little bristle brush to get rid of any remaining bits of rust. Taking all the rust off this chrome sunshade rail here and just dusted it over with some MRO chrome galvanising paint. Just used a little Dremel tool to get rid of any rust and corrosion off that end bit there because you can't put that in a rust bath otherwise it'll disintegrate. We've drilled out the old rusty screws and re-tapped the threads using an M4 0.7. Finally, those screws in there are slotted M4 10mm machine screws. Just gone over that with a couple of coats of the Eastwood self etch primer. I'll be ready for top coat tomorrow. We've just gone over those with the Eastwood Extreme Chassis Black, the satin finish, because on the car that's like a plasticised finish. Um, we'll leave that to dry for a couple of hours, that should be ready to go back on the car. We've masked off all around here gone over this with a wire wheel on the outside we're going to put some rust encapsulator on there and then on the inside we'll go in there with some eastwood frame sealer just to help protect that in the future we've used the rust encapsulator for the outside and we'll now use the eastwood frame sealer for the inside now you will never see these bits here once the trim is on but i just can't bring myself to put on clean trims over rusty metal and if you get into the habit of actually restoring the parts that you don't see properly you'll do a much better job on the bits you can see so that eastwood rust encapsulator there it just seal in any surface rust that we've got and stop it spreading and getting any worse and go some way towards treating what rust is already there we're going to use the eastwood internal frame coating and the idea of this is it has a special nozzle on the end there that puts out a spray pattern so we'll just thread that into the um, holes that we've got here and we should be able to see. The wing mirror is held on to there via this plate here which we've painted up. Now the problem we've got is that that plate was originally held on by three of these self-tapping screws. Now these would be I think 2.9 mil self-tapping screws with a 5.5 millimeter head diameter and the reason that's important is because that um, head needs to basically be below the surface there. The trouble is these screws, once they've you've taken them out, the holes are now slightly bigger because of the rust etc and these screws are just going to be too loose in there. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to tap some threads. We're going to use an M4.7 tap which is what that is there and rather than using self-tapping screws i'm actually going to use machine screws because if you go the next screw size up which is 3.9 millimeter what you'll find is that the head size of the screw increases basically increases to a 7.5 millimeter and that no longer sits flush in the metal plate i'm hoping that i can just replace that with some machine screws which do sit flush in there. Now these holes here which hold the sun visor clip on are just slightly in between two screw sizes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a tap just to enlarge the hole so we can put a number 12 5.5 mil raised head self-tapping screw. What we're using here is an M5 0.8 tap. Once you've tapped both the holes, use an old screw of the same diameter thickness that you're going to use just to make nice threads so you don't damage the threads on the actual screws you're going to use. These A-pillar trims have come up nicely with the Turtle Wax Black and a Flash. We've also taken the opportunity to sand off any rust on the metal fittings here and go over that with some of the Eastwood Rust Encapsulator. And that is now ready to go back on the car. Now these a pillar trims are held on with four special clips and the part number for those clips 107-988-0678 and i warn you that these clips are horribly expensive they come from mercedes i couldn't find a cheaper place to get them and they're about six pounds each and as i say there should be four on each side of the car now if you're lucky you may be able to save the clips that came off your car but we managed to save one out of eight of them. Um, and you'll also find that there should be these metal lips here. And you'll often find that they're completely corroded away and missing like they are there. So you could either make up your own and 
um, epoxy those in or sometimes you can just get away without doing that and just putting that on with three clips just arrived in the post is the missing link the last thing I need to complete this current bit of the project from these guys here Aku I've used them before but they're the only company that I could find that actually did raised head screws number 12 raised head screws you can get them number 10 quite easily off ebay and amazon and stuff but i couldn't find any other company that could do number 12 stainless steel raised head screws so these guys not only came up with the goods but actually delivered them the very next day as well for which i'm eternally grateful the reason these screws here are the missing link is because this um sun visor rail needs to go on the car first because that outer screw goes through this fitting here which holds the a pillar trim on and then this piece of trim sits over that other screw like so and once we've got that piece of trim on we can then put the rear view mirror on and once we've done that we can pretty much say that we've finished that particular section of the car once you've clipped this on making sure that that top hole aligns you'll be able to put the next piece of trim on and then eventually the rear view mirror um, now i've mentioned this before you don't strictly need the two clips down here for this to work it's pretty well molded and i haven't got the two lower clips on simply because to get them onto this red bit of metal i would have to take this dashboard out which i'm going to have to do at a later stage so for the time being i'm going to put this on not properly it's just clipped at the top and it will be screwed at the top there as well when you come to fit these a pillar trims and um, put the clips onto the a pillar first because these clips basically have little hooks here that dig into the metal. It's a good idea just to put some a little bit of grease on the back of those clips because <clears throat> they're not designed to come off. And then when this thing here, this fitting here, will just be able to push onto it from the front. If you put the clips in here first, it's much, much more difficult to get the A-pillar trims on if you've already got the dashboard in. So put these clips on first. Now, if you need to adjust the stiffness of this rod here, now is a good time to do it because you can see that once you put that second piece of trim on, that adjustment screw is pretty much hidden. These center clips are horribly expensive if you lose or break them. These, these pits here are still available from, uh, from those guys there, Euro, um, in black, but not in different colors. And they are held on, or at least we're holding them on, by some 4.8 number 10 4.8 flat head stainless steel screws once you've put the two top trim pieces on hopefully this will all line up which it does and we can then just finish it off by putting up on the mirror but not before we put tiny little bits of grease here and here just to help that go on all of those screws in the last thing we need to do is just click this mirror in which should go in nice and easily with the lubrication wow that took a long time to do all of that but it's come out really nicely this is now looking or starting to look like an sl we've got the a pillar trims in this top seal is all looking nice the clips we still have to refurbish these sun visors here but we've done that before in the other car i won't do a video on that these are all just full of powder we'll put new foam in there and then I think we'll move on to the putting the vinyl onto the hardboard door panels, then possibly putting the right seats in this car. But I would appreciate any feedback and from people what they think we should do with these trims. At the moment, there's a sort of mishmash of things on this car, most of which is incorrect. On the gold parts car that we're using, all of this is black vinyl. And I think that's what it would have been originally. This would all have been vinyl. And I don't think there's a wooden gear stick surround without the electric window switches. If anybody knows, or anybody's got a car with a wooden gear stick surround with manual windows, obviously this car's got manual windows, not electric windows, and please let me know. I've never seen such a thing, but I'd be really interested to see a photograph. I'm just going to finish the video giving you all these screw sizes, where we got them from, how much we paid for them to refurbish all of this. We use these guys here, Aku, for the screws for that part of the restoration. They're probably not the cheapest place on the internet. For example, those um, screws that we use to hold the rails on the number 12 raised head screws, 68 pence each for stainless steel screws. But they do have a vast range of components and they deliver them very quickly and they've got excellent customer service. So I would reckon that you could probably get every single nut, bolt and washer 
you need for a Mercedes, hex head, Allen head bolts, everything on this website. Definitely worth checking them out. Rust remover we use is from these guys here, built hammer. We use the Deox C crystals, comes in a big plastic container. If you are embarking on a restoration, just get a huge container full because you'll definitely need it for an old Mercedes. Wherever possible, we get our Eastwood products from these guys here, Moss in Bristol. Much cheaper than other places like Frost. However, it's still pretty expensive. The chrome galvanizing paint that we use to paint the rods came from here. You also here. get the rust encapsulator and the internal frame sealing um, with that special tube and nozzle.